Meeting a girl online is a great way to find a hidden gem location in the Philippines. Quick vid, I got an email. Someone's going to the fills for six months, asked for my opinion, my advice. So that's what I'm gonna give in this vid, okay? It's, it's my opinion, it's my advice of how to make a very productive six month trip in the Philippines. Okay, there's three main topics that we're gonna talk about in this vid. Number one is accommodations. Number two is getting around the country. And number three is the visas, okay? Let's talk. Airbnb is the backbone of a six month trip in the Philippines. The first thing you wanna do is get accustomed to this website, Airbnb. There are two advantages to Airbnb. The first advantage is no bills, no deposits, no furniture. Just click one button on Airbnb and your accommodation will be set for the month. This makes it very easy to spend one month in six different cities. Advantage number two, you get a big fat discount if, on Airbnb if you stay for one month. Don't stay for 25 days, stay for one month. It'll be cheaper than staying for 25 days. Sometimes you'll get a 40, 50, even a 60% discount if you stay for one month. If you stay for one week, yeah, you might get about a 10% discount. Let's give a quick example here. Now, as you can see, this Airbnb, this um, bed and breakfast, if you book it for 25 nights, it's going to be 662 bucks. This is Korean won, but <clears throat> it's about 662 bucks. Now, let's go ahead. Let's change this to a one month stay and see what happens. It's down, see, you're staying there for cheaper. You're staying there for longer, but cheaper because you get the monthly discount. So make sure you pre-book for one month. Okay, I'm just making this uh, discount thing clear. It's kind of important because if you're gonna pay night by night for six months, it's gonna be very costly. Okay, the next thing to know is how to move around the country. Let's get into this. Okay, so what I did for my five month trip around the fills is I had a rough idea in my head of where I wanted to go, but I was open-minded to meeting girls and online and going to wherever they are. For example, I ended up in Bohol and I had no, no, no plan at all to go there. And it was one of the best things I did. Now, you might be saying, well, what if I book accommodation where she is, I go to see her and we don't like each other. Well, that's fantastic because now you have more time to explore that area and hey, definitely, hey, you might meet someone even better. I mean, for me, I mean, I love that feeling of going somewhere where I would never have thought about going just to meet a girl. She's the one who introduced you to this place because we all know Manila and Cebu and Davao. I mean, it's not interesting, right? You wanna to go to these hidden gems. The hidden gems, there's a million hidden gems in the Philippines. So, you know, when I was there, I was talking to the babes online and um, there were a lot of girls I talked to. I could have gone to meet them, but I just didn't. For example, I could have gone, there was a girl in Ormoc, there was a girl in Leyte, uh, even Biliran, there was a girl in Davao. And I didn't go to any of these places. I could have, I wish I did. I wish I was a bit more adventurous. I'll, I'll tell you a few stories of these girls who I did not meet. The girl in Ormoc, I mean. <sighs> Just for reference, I was in Cebu at the time when we were about to meet and uh, she was right here in Ormoc. So it just would have been a quick ferry right away. Oh man, that was interesting because hey, you know, hey, I'm just gonna shoot. This is a family channel, but I'm just gonna be clear on this, okay? She was H, if you know what I'm saying. If you know what I'm saying, she was very H, probably the most H of any girl that I talked to, okay? And I'm not gonna say what the H word is. This is a family channel. Now this girl, I mean, she sent me nudes, okay? It's very unusual in the films, but here she is. She's living with her family. It's her, she's got five brothers, okay, uh, never had a boy boyfriend, but she was not a virgin, okay? She was pretty open about that. She told me the details, but this is a family channel, so we're not gonna get into it right here.
Anyway, so that was, that was, you know, no sense getting into it because I didn't meet her, but that was the Ormoc girl who I foolishly did not meet. I remember when I was in Cebu, uh, she asked me to uh, send her money so she could come down. Now, I didn't know if she was just, I didn't know if I was gonna send her money and then she would just keep it, I don't know. But she, she did ask me to go up there too. I just didn't do it. And maybe it's because of the Boho girl. The Ozamas girl, she was a really good, honest girl. Uh, her and I, we talked for a while. She was a good girl. Um, I kind of regret not just meeting her, going down there. She was near to CDO. Ozamas is near CDO. I just didn't go down there. I don't know why. I wish I did. I wish I did. In hindsight, I wish I went down there. Prince, I was in Kaga. I was talking to her prior to Kagayan. We were just friends, but uh, I could have just gotten a bus and gone down to Ozamas like that, but it just didn't happen. It would have been, you know, a one day trip, but just to meet her for lunch and, you know, just, just, just to meet her. But this girl, she was, uh, this, this um, Ozamas girl, she was extremely poor. The dad uh, worked in Cebu and he sent money home, but the dad was just a driver. I don't know, I mean, he drove, you know, some truck. I don't know what his salary is, but he was so poor that he didn't have his own accommodations. He lived in his truck, okay? I don't know where he showered or whatnot, but he sent everything home to the wife, and I think they got five or six kids. But this girl, as poor as she was, she never once asked me for money. And this um, Ozamas girl, I, I said to her one time, I said, you know, I've talked to lots of girls. You're the first girl who's never asked anything. I mean, she's never even asked for a load. Now, we were not like boyfriend, girlfriend. We were friendly. We were just friendly. We were just chatting as with, with a lot of these girls. But yeah, even, even that, the, the, the girls asked for something, even if it's load, she never asked for anything. And I told her that one time. I said, you know, you know, you are the only girl who's never asked me for anything. And she said, yeah, I think it should be a crime when girls do that. Now, considering how poor this girl was, right? I mean, they even skimped on food because they didn't have much money. That's pretty impressive. Okay, next, uh, there was a girl in the vow who chatting with, but did not go down to meet her. Again, a major hornball. Uh, this girl, I mean, she showed me everything, everything. And um, nudie nudes, my good man. Yes, nudie nudes. But yeah, again, I did not go down there to meet her. I love getting nudes, but I just did not go down there to meet. I don't know why. I don't know why. In hindsight, I don't know why. Now, the Billy Rand girl, this is, I mean, she was out there, out there in the province. I mean, she was the kind of girl who, when she was going to school, she took a boat from her house to school. So she must have been on like, I, I didn't go there, so I wasn't sure, but she must have been on one of those like outskirt islands, those little tiny islands that's next to the bigger island. So just for a frame of reference, Cebu is here. You can get a ferry up to Ormoc and then get a bus up to, sorry, a bus up to Billy Ran. Now, since she was on a small island, uh, let's zoom in on Billy Ran. What I'm thinking is, since I didn't go there, I don't know for sure, but she must have been on like one of these islands or one of these islands. But when she went to school, she would get a ferry into the mainland. So must have been one of these. She was like this. She said, okay, I'm going to go out there. Okay. You're going to meet my parents. Okay. And then I'm going to go with you back to your room. That's what she said. So I was like, wow, talk about instant girlfriend that Gio talks about. But yeah, again, regret did not go there to meet her, but that would have been a great adventure. You know, there are, you know, it's a great thing when you meet some love. It's also, you know, you, you have a lot of missed opportunities when you got some love, you know, you don't want to cheat on her, but if you did, you'd have a great time. I did meet, before Boho Girl, I did meet one girl. I went out to what I, I thought it was called Gingook, okay, but it's called Hinuhu, and I'm still not pronouncing it right. I don't know how the hell you pronounce it. Hinuhug, Hingahug, something like that. Whenever I say it, they said, I said, Hingahug. They're like, no, Hingahug. It's Gingug in my dictionary. It is Gingug. So uh, anyway, the story with her is I went out there. This is prior to Boho Girl, okay? So I'm in CDO at this time. I went out to Gingug, okay? It was, I think it was a four hour bus ride. The plan was, I'm gonna go out there. We're gonna spend the night together. 
and then her and I are going to come back to CDO. She's going to stay with me until my lease is up. And then we're going to go back to live in Gingook. I mean, this is, this is how crazy Scotty boy is. What happened was I went out to the four hour trip to, to Hinehu, Gingook. In Cagayan when we were talking, and this was all very sudden. Uh, unlike the other girls, we were talking for a long time. But I, the bus went all the way up here, all the way around, kind of the long way. And uh, you, you go through these villages right here. And let me tell you one thing, okay? There were these uh, highway, uh, they're on the side of the highway, there are these little villages. You wonder how any of these people make money. There's no industry there at all. And I'll tell you one thing, man. <sighs> the, the small little towns, probably 50 people, 100 people in the town. You drive your, you drive the bus, man, they, the most beautiful girls are in these villages, man. I couldn't believe it. I have a plan in the future. I'm going to bring a, a car or a scooter, stop in these villages, sort of walk around. I think it'd be so fun. So uh, anyway, we made our way to Gingug and uh, let's just stop into Gingug and say hello, because I'm going to show you exactly where I was where are we here? So, yeah, here we are in the amazing Gingug. Okay, so here is the bus terminal, and I met this girl about right here. There should be. Let's see. So we met right here, and then I walked up this road. Oh, wow. Are you telling me... It, this was not here before. You could not get. Oh, wow. Oh, wait, here's the. Okay. This was not even available before. Okay. So here's the bus terminal. And so I walked up this road and um, let's go up here. I walked up this road here and yeah, there it is. There's the Jolly Bee. Move up here. Okay, yeah, I went into, where was it? One of these stores to get a load here. Might have been this one. I can't, no, it wouldn't have been, I can't remember. One of these stores I got load and I made my way up to here. So I was waiting right here at the corner and then the two girls came, okay? And I'd never seen two girls more tiny. They were sisters. And so we went into this uh, Jollibee here to eat and uh, yeah these girls they didn't even eat okay so I said do you want spaghetti they said sure uh, <laughs> they get it they just drank the drink they didn't even drink so I had their spaghetti since it's such a small amount so yeah and then after that uh, we walked down here to meet the uncle where is the uncle I wonder if unk is still around let me see because he's right on this road here. He's got some biz. Okay. Uh, he sells. Oh, wait. Is that it? Yeah, here it is. That's where we were. Okay. So we were right here. Yeah, he sells chickens. He's right here. So one of these people I can't see. They might be the uncle or the son of the uncle, the guy who got the girl pregnant because she was a single mama. Anyway, she was... I can't believe this. She was sitting right here where this lady is, and she was breastfeeding on the side of the road. The whole family was here, and she just didn't care. This is how it is in the province. Anyway, from here, we walked up to the, you saw it earlier, that uh, fruit stand. Uh, not fruit stand. We went to the, uh, the marketplace here where they sell vegetables and whatnot, and the... What some lady, I don't know what it was. She asked me to buy some she asked me to buy some of her vegetables or whatever. And I said, no, it's okay. And she spazzed out at me and it sort of caused a, an awkward scene. And so about five minutes after that, we uh left from this end here and we walked up here around and yeah, I hopped on the bus. I told her, I'm gonna go. I'm going to call you uh, when I get home. Um, I was not feeling very comfortable there. I just wasn't feeling the jive. And I got in the bus right here about. And I headed the hell back home to CDO. And the thing is, man, look. Wow. I didn't like her. I did not like her. We just, I, didn't, I just didn't have that vibe with her, right? 
So uh, I met her. I met her family. Um, she lived near the. If you know, if you know Hinehug, she was nearby the walking distance to the uh, market, which is which is also next to the bus terminal. So the whole time I was there, basically, I was just on one street. Everything was on that same street as the bus terminal. And um, yeah, I said, look, uh, I'm going to go back to CDO. Um, uh, I'll message you when I get back, okay? And so, yeah, I went back home and we were still friendly when we talked, but that was it. We never met again. But it was fun. It was fun going out to Hinehoog. It was a great experience. And uh, yeah, the Hinehoog girl, she had a baby. She was a single mom. And uh, yep, newsflash, newsflash, the guy who got her pregnant, he took off faster than Mario Andretti. I know you're shocked. I know you, I, I'm equally as shocked, but it happens. It does happen in the Philippines. Not very often, but it does happen. So she was a single mother, uh, unemployed, living with her parents. So she was looking for some guy to lift her up a bit, I'm sure. And anyway, an update with that girl, because we kept in touch. Uh, she got some boyfriend later on, a Canadian guy. Uh, he was a, I think it was a professor, but oh my God. We're talking the ugliest person I've ever seen. I mean, the guy, he looked about, I don't know how old he was, but he was about 75. He looked about 75 and just, I mean, he, I mean, Jesus Christ, he was ug. Ugh, scary ugh, if you know what I'm saying, okay? I do have a, a picture of him because she sent it to me, but I, I won't show it here out of respect for that guy. So yeah, that's what I recommend for getting around the fills. It's, it's really like you have some rough idea in your head. If you're gonna be there for six months, I recommend uh, listing down six cities that you wanna um, go to. Use that as your rough plan. And uh, after you're there, hey man, you play it by ear. You play it by ear and um, you might want to change where you go because maybe you're talking to someone and he says, well, you really got to go to this other city. And maybe you meet some girl and it works out and you end up staying there for the whole six months. You don't know. So yeah, okay, we got accommodations with Airbnb. We got uh, a, a rough idea that is open for change when it comes to where you're gonna go for that six months. So we got two things covered. Now, number three, what we're gonna cover is the visa. This is just Scotty Boy's advice for the visa. Okay, so you wanna make sure that you get as long a visa as you can while you're in some big city, okay? Because you don't know where you're gonna be later on. So when you, when you land in the fields, you're gonna get one month in your passport. And then after one month, one month of being in Phil's, you're going to have to renew it at a immigration office. So they're at all of the big cities and smaller cities too. But what I recommend is you can get a six month uh, extension. So even if you're going to be there for uh, six months, so after one month, you get, I recommend you get the six month extension. Now you're gonna pay for that extra month that you might not need, but that's okay because you're gonna save the inconvenience of having to go to the immigration six times or five additional times. And on top of that, you, it's a, it may be a huge convenience because you don't know where you're gonna be each, each month when your visa is about to expire. So I recommend getting as long a visa as you can while you are in some city that has an immigration office. More advice, um, the immigration offices, they charge different amounts in different cities. I know this for a fact. I got friends who are there. One friend, he renewed after one month. It was in uh, Makati, it was 2000 pesos. My other friend renewed after one month. He was in Takloban. He paid 4000 So obviously what they're doing is they're just pocketing some money. Different offices will be a little more corrupt. The closer you are to a big city like Cebu or Manila, less chance of there being any, um, you know, you know, sticky fingers. Now, the last bit of advice here. Now, if you want to get the six month after one month, they might not give it to you. Okay, um, because usually they'll give you one month, then three months, then six months, like that kind of thing. Now, if you want to get it after your one month there, I recommend you go to either Manila or Cebu, you hire an agency, 
and let them do the visa for you because they are, you know, they're friends, they know each other. The guy's gonna say, give this guy six months, give this guy three months, and they're just gonna do it. But if you go to the immigration by yourself and ask for six months, they're gonna say, no, sir, sorry, sir, you gotta do it next time, sir. And so I recommend hiring, uh, paying the extra, I think it's just an extra 2,000 pesos. You pay the immigration people and hey, then you don't have to sit there in the lineup at the immigration office. Let them do it. That basically will free up your morning that you should have gone to the immigration office. You don't want to deal with immigration. It's just a bunch of waiting. Okay, guys, that is all for this question. That is just Scotty Boy's advice. Now, Hey, I love making these vids because I've been going to Phil's for 20 years. I know how things work there. If you got any questions, I would love to make a quick vid for your question. I would love to answer it as best I can. I enjoy it. I love it. And uh, thank you guys. Please click the subscribe button, please. I love when you click the subscribe button. Now, my goal right here, I'm trying to build this channel so when I actually go there, I got some more friends to meet when I'm actually there, okay? So when I get there, hey, I'm open to meeting anyone, anywhere, anytime, even if it's 4 a.m., I don't care. Anytime is okay with me. So I'll see you guys very soon. Hey, you know, you know who I am talking about on my next vid? The world famous G-Man. You know who I'm talking about. I met him in Dumaguete and that's who we're going to talk about next. I'm going to talk about the time I had lunch with the G-Man. And this was prior to Gingaling. Thank you, Sir God, for the blessings.